Hi, I'm Margret. In this video I'm going to introduce you to Windows Presentation Foundation. Windows Presentation Foundation is a presentation framework for building Windows client applications. The core of Windows Presentation Foundation is a resolution-independent and vector-based rendering engine. Windows Presentation Foundation has a number of different application development features. One of them is XAMR. This is a declarative markup language that allows us to specify the visual presentation of user applications. That is similar to the way HTML allows us to specify the visual presentations of a web page. There are also controls. Windows Presentation Framework provides a wide selection of built-in controls, for example, radio buttons, text boxes, sliders, data grids, calendars, etc. Controls provide lots of useful functionality that is ready to be used in our applications. There are also styles. They allow us to specify the look and feel of the graphical user interface. We can use styles to set properties of controls, like for example the color, font, margin. Because we can specify the style that applies to all buttons or to a certain category of buttons, it can be very helpful in bringing consistency to our user interface. If you have done some web development, you might find some similarities between styles and cascading style sheets. Another feature of Windows Presentation Foundation are templates. They allow us to redefine the look and feel of controls. We could, for example, write a template that makes buttons appear oval shaped, or a template for a list that displays both the name and a photo for each of our contacts. Windows Presentation Foundation also has data binding. With data binding, we can bring data from the code to the UI layer. We could, for example, have a list of fonts and then use data binding to display each of the font names in the font that the name specifies. Windows Presentation Foundation supports a strong separation of content and presentation. This has an advantage because it allows software developers and graphical designers to work on an application simultaneously. Windows Presentation Foundation has a number of different container controls. They provide built-in layout functionality. Container controls give us an ordered way to place UI elements and they manage the size and position of the contained controls when the window is resized. Here are some frequently used container controls. Canvas, Stack Panel, Wrap Panel, Dock Panel and Grid. Let's have a closer look at each of them. Canvas is the most basic container control. Its child elements are positioned with explicit coordinates. Canvas is often used to group two-dimensional objects. It is a good choice for drawing, but usually not a good choice for graphical user interfaces, because absolute coordinates don't resize when we change the size of the window. A plus of Canvas is the flexibility in the sense that we can place UI elements wherever we like and we are not confined by any layout structure. Another container is the stack panel. Stack panels stack the controls in the order in which they were added. By default, the orientation is vertical. That means one control is placed below the other one. However, this property can be changed. If we choose to have horizontal orientation, each control is placed right next to the control that was added last. It is possible to add more controls than fit the window. In that case, the user won't be able to see them unless he or she resizes the window. Similarly, it is possible for the user to reduce the window size 
and by doing so hide some of the controls. Wrap panels are similar to stack panels. They place controls in the desired direction until the space is filled. Then it continues in the next row or column. In case of the wrap panel, the default orientation is horizontal. That means one control is placed next to the prior one. This is similar to the way we write one word next to the other one until we need to move on to the next line. When we set the orientation to vertical, we place one control below the other until the current column is filled. Then we move up to the next column. Whenever we resize a wrap panel, the new position of controls is calculated. They are shifted around as appropriate in order to fill the rows or columns dependent on the selected orientation. Unless the whole window is filled, controls won't go out of sight. Another container control is the dock panel. In this case, child controls are arranged relative to one another. The dock panel allows us to place a component on top, the left, the right, or on the bottom. By default, the property last child fill is set to true, which means that the control that is added last takes up the space that remains. Both the horizontal and vertical alignments are set to stretch. Because of that, my bottom one, which was placed first in the top position, filled the whole width of the window. Button two was placed on the left. Notice how it filled the remaining height, but it doesn't reach all the way to the top of the window because that place was already taken by button one. The third button placed was button three. It was put at the bottom and filled whatever width was available. The last button that was added to the dock panel was button four. Because the property last child fill was true, it filled whatever space was left in the window. Let's have a look at one last container control, the grid. When you create a new Windows Presentation Foundation application, it includes a grid with one row and one column. In that sense, it can be considered the default container control. The number of rows and columns, as well as the size, can be defined by the user. We can specify the relative height and width by using stars. For example, if we have two rows, where one row has height star and the other row has height three star, that means that one row takes up 25% of the height and the other row takes up 75% of the height. We can place controls in specific cells by specifying the row and column number. The property row span and column span allow us to place controls so they span over multiple cells. Here is an example that demonstrates how controls are placed inside a grid. Notice we have a row definition. In our case, we defined two rows and a column definition, we defined two columns. We didn't specify any um, absolute row height, nor did we use the star notation. Because of that, all four areas have equal size. Let's look at the first button. It is in row zero, column zero. This is my top left quadrant. Let's look at button three. Same column, column zero, but different row, row one. So this is on my left hand side at the bottom. And one more button we are going to look at is button four. So button four is in row one, column one. This is my bottom right quadrant. And so the last thing I wanna show you in this video is alignment. Here I have four examples of horizontal alignment. You can see in the example, my left alignment places the button on the left, right alignment would place the button on the right of the given area, center 
would place it in the center and stretch would just fill out whatever horizontal space is available. Something, something similar happens to the vertical alignment we have top and notice we are talking about the top within a given row so we have a row and within that row you're on top or at the bottom or in the center of that row or in case of stretch it just fills out the whole row with all the vertical space available.